ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> today we witness another episode of a consistent pattern of abuse of power and manipulation of the criminal justice system recently one of the witnesses in the, in the Altantuya trial approached us with detailed information of the events connected to her disappearance and murder the information was shocking Mr. P. Balasubramania, to my right, <clears throat> who was engaged by Abdul Razak Baginda as a private investigator, was advised to seek legal counsel and document his story independently. And Amrit Singh Sidhu is his counsel. Today is releasing a, a, a set statutory declaration dated 1st July 2008 to the public with a story that he has to tell about what actually happened and what was told to him by key personalities in the saga, including Abdul Razak Baginda and Altantuya herself. These revelations speak for themselves. They reveal, among others, the following allegations. Bala Subramanian was engaged by Abdul Razak Baginda to deal with alleged harassment by Altantuya in relation to debts owed to her, para 5 and 6. Altantuya was promised a commission of 500,000 US dollars for assisting in a submarine deal in Paris, Para 22, 25, 28. Altantuya was introduced to Razak Baginda by Datuk Sri Najib at a diamond exhibition in Singapore, Para 25, 28. Altantuya, Datuk Sri Najib and Razak Baginda had all been seen together at a dinner in Paris, Para 28. After the disappearance of Altantuya, commotion took place in front of Razak Baginda's house several days after 20th October, long, where girlfriends of Altantuya and one Mr. Ang, Altantuya's own private investigator, turned up looking for Altantuya. Razak then called one DSP Musa Safri, Najib's ADC, who called him back, informing him that Musa would be calling him back on his handphone and that he was to pass the phone to the inspector from Dangwangi police station. Bala Subramaniam then received the call from Musa Safri and duly passed the phone to the inspector. After the conversation of three to four minutes, the inspector told the girls to disperse and to go see him the next day. Bala Subramaniam was interrogated at Bukit Aman for seven consecutive days and his statement recorded at the end of November 2008. Wrong, wrong, sorry. 2006, sorry. November 2006. He says that he told the police all that he knew, including everything Razak Bagina Altantuya told him about their relationship with Najib. These details were omitted by the police from the statement he was asked to sign. During the trial of Suril, Azila and Razak Baginda, the prosecutor did not ask him any questions in respect to the relationship uh, of the relationship Altantuya had with Datuk Sri Najib or of the phone call that he had received from DSP Musa Safri. When Razak was arrested, Bala was told by him that he had sent an SMS to Najib that evening before. Razak also informed Bala Subramaniam that he had received an SMS from Najib and showed it to him. The message from Datuk Sri Najib read, read, I am seeing IGP at 11 a.m. today. Matter will be solved. Be cool. I also understand that Musa went to see Najib yesterday evening. I'm sure he said the same thing, be cool. Bala, Bala's evidence also mentioned the extent of the relationship between Altantuya and Najib. I'm not interested here in the personal nature of the relationship. There is uh, his and hers business. However, the allegations revealed by him raised key questions of public interest. A. Suppression of evidence by the police, investigating officers, and those responsible for prosecuting this case. Such suppression could only have happened with the full knowledge of top public officials such as the IGP and the Attorney General. B. 
The question is also raised as to whether such suppression of evidence was the reason behind the last minute switch in the DPP's handling the case, where the head of the criminal division of the AG's chambers, Dr. Yusuf Zainal Abidin, was completely sidelined from the case, leading him and the senior DPP originally slotted for the case Salahuddin to put in papers for early retirement some months later. C. Questions can be raised now with regard to the sudden switching of the judge fixed to hear the case which took place in March 2007. Why was this really done? Whether it is correct, correct, correct or otherwise. Did Dato Sri Najib lie when he said that he had never met Atan Tuya ever before? E. Did Dato Sri Najib lie when he said that he was not involved in any commission deals for the purchases of the Scorpion submarines? I would add the SD of Raja Petra, which has been largely ignored by the authorities for now. Now, Mr. Bala's evidence vindicates what we have been saying all along. There has been no proper investigation of the murder of Atantuya and the investigation and proceedings in court seem to follow a pre-arranged script for a pre-arranged outcome. These are serious implications for the administration of justice in this country, where our key institutions such as the police, the AGIS chambers and the judiciary are already severely tarnished. Today's revelations further confirm a clear and consistent pattern of manipulation of the criminal justice system that we have witnessed in this country. And in my personal case from 1998-99 and now 2008, I have every reason to believe that this pattern continue unabated and worse with impunity. The allegations revealed here warrant a full Royal Commission of Inquiry. Terima kasih. Ada soalan? Tak ada, terima kasih. Balik, tulis bercepat. Dan saya tahu ada arahan, terutama media utama, kalau nama Datuk Seri Najib disebut, dipadamkan. Jadi kita nak tengok televisyen uh, di Malaysia malam ini. Sama ada nama Datuk Seri Najib boleh disebut atau tidak. Kalau tidak, di negara ini nyata orang-orang besar dan tokoh-tokoh besar diselamatkan dalam semua kesalahan. Dan orang-orang yang nampak tidak senang dengan AMNO dan Barisan Nasional akan direncana supaya dihumban ke penjara sekali lagi. Saya, Raja Petra, dalam kes ini siap sedia. Um, the reason is very simple that Bala was waiting for the prosecution to lead this evidence. But the prosecution case was only shut very recently. And I think that's the reason why he's quite surprised about it and, and part of the reason why he came out with the statutory declaration. Uh, Bala says that he was in a lockup <coughs> for seven consecutive days. All he wanted to do was to go home. So instead of uh, arguing with the police as to what should have been in the statement or not, he was happy to sign the statement and leave. Actually, the period of time uh, I was in the lockup, I was under uh, some... Uh, and actually, I'm 40, I was on 48 day prayers. I supposed to leave to India. You know, then some or other in the lockup, I don't get a good vegetarian food. That's why the, when the seven, one, the seven days finished, they brought the statement to my cell, asking to sign. I just go through the this one, then I ask questions. But uh, even uh, the police officer who asked me to sign, they even uh, put a white paper in the, this one, their name and their, this one. They didn't show their name, they didn't show what rank they are, they asked me to sign. But as a man inside the lockup, if you have an experience inside the lockup, definitely you will sign the statement. Because you've got to go out. Because I, I have three children. For no reason they put me in the lockup. There's no reason. I was arrested under 302. What's the reason I was under arrested under 302? I am a private That's institution for Raza. I shouldn't be arrested under 302. The first place I shouldn't be in the lockup. Why? They can call me to take a statement. They can call me every day to take a statement.